Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, there lived a woman who had three daughters. The eldest was called One Eye, because she had only one eye, which sat in the middle of her forehead. The second was called Two Eyes, because she had two eyes, just like the rest of us. And the youngest, Three Eyes, because she had three eyes. Two eyes, just like us, and one eye in the centre of her forehead. However, because Two Eyes looked just as other humans did, her sisters and her mother, who had nine tiny eyes, could not stand her. They would say to her, You! With your two eyes, just like the humans, are common. You do not belong to us. They would push her about and order her around. And they gave her nothing to eat but their scraps from dinner. They did everything in their power to make her unhappy. How mean they were. And so it came to pass that two eyes were sent away every day to take the family's goat out to pasture. Every day, two eyes walked to the faraway fields and kept watch over the goat. And every day, she was always quite hungry, since her sisters gave her so little to eat. One day, she sat down on a ridge, which was covered in beautiful, thick grass, and began to weep. Then, a voice asked, Why are you weeping, child? Little Two Eyes stopped her sobs and looked up. A woman stood above her. Have I not reason to weep when I have just two eyes like the rest? My sisters and mother despise me for it and give me nothing to eat but the scraps they leave after dinner. (laughs) I am so hungry. And so I ask again, have I not reason to weep? Wipe your tears, little one. And I will tell you a secret, and it will stop you suffering from hunger ever again. All you must do is say to your goat, Bleat, my little goat, bleat. Cover the table with something to eat. And then a little table will stand before you, and it will be covered in the most delicious food you have ever tasted. And you may eat as much of it as you like. And when you have had enough, all you must do is say, Bleat, my little goat, bleat, I pray. Take the table quite away. And then the table will vanish from your sight. And with that, the woman was gone. Two Eyes thought to herself, I should at least try and see if it is true, for I am so very hungry. She said, Bleat, my little goat, bleat. Cover the table with something to eat. She had scarcely finished the words when a little table covered with a white cloth appeared before her. And on it sat a plate with a knife and fork, a silver spoon and a napkin. And all around the setting... There was the most delicious food, steaming as if it had just come out of the oven. Two Eyes was so very thankful, and she sat down right away and helped herself to some food. It was the best meal she had ever had in her life. And when she was satisfied, she said, just as the woman had told her, Bleat, my little goat, bleat, I pray. Take the table quite away. Immediately the little table and everything on it disappeared. What a delightful way of keeping house, Two Eyes thought to herself. And in the evening when she returned home, Two Eyes found a small plate with some food, or crumbs more like, which her sisters had left for her. She did not touch it. The next morning, she went out into the hills with her goat, leaving the few bits of bread which had been given to her on a plate in the kitchen, untouched. 
The first and second time she did this, her sisters did not think anything of it. But when it began to happen every day, they noticed. The sisters said to one another, Something is the matter with two eyes, for she has not been eating what we leave her. This is quite unusual, as she used to eat up everything that we gave her. She must have discovered another way of getting food. They told their mother, and she too was quite puzzled. We shall get to the bottom of it, she said. So that they might learn the truth, they devised a plan in which one eye would go with two eyes to take the goat to pasture. One eye was to see what two eyes did while she was in the fields and whether anyone was bringing her food or drink. And so, the next time two eyes set out, one eye went to her and said, I will go with you today and see that the goat is well taken care of and driven where there is food so that he might eat plenty. Two eyes knew exactly what her sister was up to. And so she drove the goat all the way into the high hills and said, Come on, one eye. Let us sit, and I will sing for you. One Eye sat down and closed her eye. She was quite exhausted, for she was not accustomed to walking so far. Two Eyes sat by her and began to sing. One Eye, are you awake? One Eye, are you asleep? One Eye shut her eye and fell into a deep sleep. Once she knew her sister would not be easily woken and could not discover her secret, Two Eyes said, Bleat, my little goat, bleat. Cover the table with something to eat. The little table appeared before her, and just like before, it was covered in a white tablecloth, and on it sat the most delicious food. Two Eyes was so very thankful. She seated herself at the table, and ate and drank until she was full, and then she cried again. Bleat, my little goat, bleat, I pray. Take the table quite away. And in an instant, it was gone. Not long after, Two Eyes woke One Eye and said, One Eye, if you want to take care of the goat and go to sleep while you are doing it, let us go home, and you shall leave this task to me. And so they went home, and again two eyes left her little dish untouched. One eye could not explain to their mother why she would not eat it. But when her mother pressed her for answers, one eye admitted, I fell asleep while I was in the fields, mother. The next day, their mother said to three eyes, This time you shall go and see if two eyes eats anything when she is out, and see if anyone brings her food and drink. She has not eaten in days. She must be eating in secret, and I shall hear of it. So Three Eyes went to Two Eyes and said, I will go with you to see if the goat is properly taken care of and brought to where there is food for him. But Two Eyes again knew just what Three Eyes was up to, and again drove the goat into the high hills. When they reached the meadow, Two Eyes said, We will sit down here and I shall sing to you, sister. Three Eyes was quite tired from the walk, just as One Eye had been. And with the heat of the sun beating down on her, she could barely keep any of her eyes open. Two Eyes began to sing just as before. But instead of singing, Three Eyes, Are You Asleep? She mistakenly sang, Two Eyes, Are You Asleep? She did not realise her error, and so she continued, Three eyes, are you awake? Two eyes, are you asleep? Then, two of the eyes, which three eyes had, softly closed and fell fast asleep. But the third eye, as it had not been named in the song, did not sleep. In fact, it was wide awake and Three Eyes cunningly closed the third eye to pretend it was asleep, but kept it open just a bit, just enough so that it could see everything Two Eyes was doing. 
once Two Eyes thought that Three Eyes was fast asleep, she again said, Bleat, my little goat, bleat! Cover the table with something to eat! Then, when the table was set, she ate and drank as much as her heart desired. And when she was satisfied, she said, Bleat, my little goat, bleat, I pray! Take the table quite away! Three Eyes saw everything, but still she did not stir. And not long after, Two Eyes woke her and said, Have you been asleep, Three Eyes? What a terrible caretaker you are! Come, we shall go home, and you shall leave me to tend to the goat from now on. When they returned home, Two Eyes again did not eat, but instead went straight to bed. Three Eyes told their mother, I have found why she does not eat our food. While she is out, she says to the goat, Bleat, my little goat, bleat. Cover the table with something to eat. And then a table appears with the most delightful-looking food, much better than any we've ever had. And when she's eaten it all, she says, Bleat, my little goat, bleat. I pray, take the table quite away. And then it all just disappears. I watched quite closely. She used a spell to put two of my eyes to sleep, but luckily I was able to keep my third awake. Their mother was quite upset. She stomped about the house until suddenly she stopped and said, Does she want to fare better than we? Well, it shall not be. And she fetched a lead rope and took the goat to town, where she sold it. (coughs) The next morning... When Two Eyes went to take the goat to pasture, she found him gone. Her sisters taunted. Bleat, bleat, our little Two Eyes. You shall never see your little goat again. Two Eyes was beside herself. She walked up to the ridge and began to weep. After a while, when she had calmed, she looked up. And there before her stood the woman. She asked Two Eyes, Why do you weep? Have I not reason to weep? She replied, The goat which covered the table for me every day when I spoke your charm, who I love dearly, has been sold by my mother and now I shall be hungry again. Dear Two Eyes, I will give you a bit of good advice. Ask your sisters to give you the lead rope and the little bell from the goat. Bury it in front of your house and your fortune shall be made. Then, in an instant, she was gone. So Two Eyes went home and said to her sisters, Dear sisters, do give me the lead rope and the little bell from my goat, for I wish to keep it so that I might remember him. They laughed and replied, If that's all you want, you can have it. In the evening, just as the sun was setting, Two Eyes took the lead rope and the bell and buried them in front of the house, just as the woman had told her to do. The next morning, they all woke to find a magnificent tree where Two Eyes had buried the rope and the bell. But it was no ordinary tree, for it had leaves of silver and fruit of gold. They could not believe their eyes. How could this tree have grown during the night? Two Eyes smiled, for she knew. She told them, It is from the rope and bell of my goat, which I buried here just last evening. Her mother replied, Well, good! Finally, something useful came out of that smelly little thing. One Eye, climb up, my dear child, and pick some fruit for us. One Eye obeyed and climbed up the tree. But when she was about to grab hold of one of the golden apples, the branch moved out of reach. She tried again, but still it moved. This happened each time. One Eye could not pluck a single apple, no matter how hard she tried. Her mother grew impatient and said, Get down! Let your sister try! Three Eyes, climb up! 
You have three eyes and so you can look about better than one eye. Three eyes obeyed, but had no more luck plucking a golden apple. They were always out of reach. Their mother grew so irritated that she climbed up herself. But just as with her two daughters, she was not able to pick one piece of golden fruit. As their mother climbed down, Two Eyes said, Perhaps I shall climb up. I feel I may fare better than you. And the sisters giggled. Yes, indeed, you with your two eyes. What could you possibly do? But Two Eyes ignored them and climbed up. And unlike her family, when Two Eyes reached for an apple, they moved towards her hand so that she could pluck them one after the other with the greatest of ease. And when she was done, she brought down a whole apron full of golden apples with her. Her mother took them away, and instead of treating little Two Eyes any better, she and her other daughters only grew more envious because Two Eyes was the only one able to get the fruit. One day, as they were all standing together by the tree, a young knight rode up on his horse. Quick, Two Eyes, cried her sisters. Hide yourself under this barrel and don't let anyone see you, for you will disgrace us with your two eyes. And they lowered the barrel on top of her so that she was out of sight. The knight came closer and admired the tree. He was quite handsome. He said, To whom does this magnificent tree belong? Anyone who might give me one branch from it might ask in return for whatever their heart desired. One eye and three eyes replied that the tree belonged to them and that they would be happy to give him a branch. They both tried and tried, but it was no use. They could not do it, for both the branches and the fruit moved away from them every time. The knight remarked, How odd it is indeed that the tree should belong to you and that you should still not be able to have any piece of it. They assured him the tree was theirs, and while they were saying so, Two Eyes, so vexed at her sisters for not telling the truth, rolled a few of the golden apples from under the barrel to the feet of the knight. When the knight saw the apples, he was surprised. Where do these come from? It is from our sister, but you see, she has but two eyes, and therefore she is not to be looked upon, cried the sisters. Two eyes climbed out from underneath the barrel and stood before the knight. The knight was taken with her great beauty. I do believe that you can most certainly give me a branch from the tree. Yes, she replied, I certainly shall be able to, for the tree belongs to me. And so. She climbed up and with the greatest of ease broke off a branch with shiny silver leaves and golden fruit and gave it to the knight. And what shall I give you in return, Two Eyes? he asked. Alas, she answered, I have known little but hunger and thirst. My life is naught but grief and want from morning till night. I ask that you take me with you and save me from these things. I should be forever grateful. It would be my greatest honour. So the knight lifted two eyes onto his horse and took her home with him to his father's castle. She was given food and drink to her heart's content. The knight fell madly in love with her and she with him. They were married not long after and they were happy all their lives. One eye and three eyes were quite jealous of their sister, but they were satisfied in the thought that the tree now belonged to them. They thought, even if we can gather no food from it, everyone who passes takes a moment to admire it. And because of this, who knows what good things may be in store for us? The next morning, they found that the tree had vanished into thin air and their hopes were dashed. And on the very same day, when two eyes looked out of her window, to her great delight, The tree was standing in front of her. Many years later, two poor women came to Two Eyes in her castle and begged for food. 
Two Eyes recognized them immediately. They were her sisters, forgiving them for all they had done. She was kind to them and made them welcome. Two Eyes took such good care of One Eye and Three Eyes that they both, with all their hearts, repented how mean they had been to their sister in their youth. drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>